It's a frosty December morning in the lovely Derbyshire Dales, and we're joining J.P. Gerda for a driven pheasant day run by the Jones family at Big Inn. <laughs> J.P. shoots from a wheelchair and has his own YouTube channel, The Seated Gun. Lovely little family shoot. We've just done a nice little entry drive uh, for the day here, which has uh, provided us with some nice birds. And we certainly saw some nice tall cock pheasants coming out on the right side of us. So yeah, we took a few nice birds as well. So we can't complain to the start of the day. Today, we are on the faithful Zenith. Um, so Ely Zenith. Uh, Zenith is lead. I'm using a 34.4 today. We're sticking with the lead today. Uh, I've got preferences and I'm sure most guns have. And I think um, steel is something that you have to change the way you shoot, change the way you think about how you're gonna place, where you're gonna place the shot to the bird. And also it varies massively, I think, on, on the height and the, uh, the size of the birds. Today, you know, yes, um, I think if there was partridge flying, I think steel would be a great, a great shell for today. Um, but then some of these cock birds, as you've seen, James, the few that came down around us, um, they're good sized birds. And I just, hand on heart, I think, all the manufacturers, not just some, I think all of them have got um, uh, uh, you know, work to do to get these steels to where someone who is used to lead is gonna use a steel as a direct comparison rather than as a, an alternative. I think the season started with a lot of trepidation, a lot of concerns. We, you know, we had sort of partridge shortages, bird flu overseas, bird flu here, all sorts of different things going on. But I think, hand on heart, I think the season is now starting to sort of pan out a little bit now. And uh, we've managed to get a lot of days in, we've been north, south, east and west, and uh, we've still got more to go in January. So uh, we've certainly had a, our fair share of shoots this season. We can't complain, James. <laughs> Henry's loading for me. Henry is one of the sons. And then you've got Rich, who is the other son, who is working the beat line. Uh, we're here today for Ian, who's uh, dad, who's the big boss. It's his birthday, so uh, we have been very kindly invited by him to join him on his birthday shoot today with him and some close friends. Um, and then mum is back at the house and she's preparing all food and hospitality and looking after us and getting us all warm back there, hopefully, when we go back to Elevenses. JP's a very good friend and um, we've had him previous. There's not many places the uh, Polaris Rangers can't go to, so it's not a problem for us at all, really. Um, we can pretty much get get someone in a wheelchair to every peg that they need to be on. And it shoots all right, doesn't it? Hits a few. Not too bad, not too <laughs> bad. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the secret to being a leader? Is there a special knack to it? I suppose there is, really. I think that the biggest thing is people tend to rush and they think, oh, there's a lot of birds coming away. And as soon as you start rushing, you start fumbling and you better just take your time stuff the cartridges in. I like to just say yes to the gun so he knows he can close his gun. Um, obviously not shouting it, but yeah. otherwise you could end up getting your fingers trapped in it or something, <laughs> which has been known. Um, yeah. But yeah, just to take your time, to be honest. Yeah. One in each hand and in. The time they've shot those two cartridges, you've picked two more out anyway, so. It's a freezing cold day, so the talk at break time naturally turns to the best way of keeping warm. Tweeds generally keep you really nice and warm anyway, um, but certainly today is one of those days where thermals are required, I think. So I think you just gotta wrap up, I think layer up, wrap up, and try and keep as warm as you can on these types of days. I think the biggest issue is when, it's, when it is as cold as what it is today, is that you, you automatically as, uh, you know, you tighten up and you keep everything sort of close because you don't want to, you don't want to let any air circulate. But the problem being in, in doing that, of course, is then when you do go to raise your gun, that's when then you end up where it's not in the right place or you're pulling muscles or whatever else, you know, goes on. So I think you've just got to be as relaxed as you can and, you know, just try and stay as warm as you can. We are actually quite fortunate because the sun's behind us. So we had a nice little bit of warmth on the back of our necks and on the back, on our backs, but uh, it's just everywhere else is still, it's still frozen. 
JP has come up with a brilliant idea which he thinks could make some enterprising gun maker a fortune. Anyone that comes up with a heated gun, so uh, if we go down the lines of a heated steering wheel in a car, if we've got a heated fore-end, heated stock, um, I think that would be uh, rather nice to say the least. <laughs> and I think it uh, might in increase the volume of shooters out in those colder climates. <laughs> <laughs> JP's wife Katie does all the filming and editing for their YouTube channel and she has recently raised her game with a new piece of kit. This is the third time I've ever used it. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty well. What you really would like to see is that bird coming towards you and give you that bird's eye view. Um, but it's you're never going to know where the bird's coming from. You never know where, where the, if the gun's going to hit it. So we've got to at least try, haven't we? So we'll just put it up there, have a look. And I mean, there's some stunning scenery here as well. So we're able to capture some of the, um, the scenery at the same time, but it's worth a try. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Any, any particular sort of tips and tricks you've learned in your first few flights? YouTube is definitely your friend. They will definitely give you some good guidance. Um, and I think they say RTFM, don't they? Read the manual. <laughs> um, women are quite good at picking up manuals. Um, and yeah, I've, I've had to have a go. It's, it's uncomfortable sort of the first couple of times your heart beats throwing through your throat when you uh, think you're actually going to lose it but yeah. it will come back eventually so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you hope it's a dji uh, mini 2 ultra light so actually it's quite good because we haven't got any restrictions on um we don't need any uh, licenses because of the weight of it um, which means that we can actually fly it anywhere. And in all honesty, because we're in private land, we don't have a problem with um, where we're going to be flying it anyway. So it takes some getting used to um, and just connects your iPhone and throw it up in the air and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's taken a shot at it, but I have crashed it. The first time I ever used it, I threw it into a tree. I was so concerned about putting it into um, uh, the ground that actually um, I put it into a tree, but Amazingly, it survived and it's lived to fly to another day. So, yeah, good. I am not a professional when it comes to cameras. Um, I'm sort of, I have a go and sort of throw it all together as, as we've uh, been going. We, this has just been me and Jean-Paul um, throwing this together as we've been going and learning. Every day is a learning curve. So every time we come out into the field, we're learning and trying something new and we're coming up with ideas together. So for this drive, this is one of one of the first drives that uh, we've actually had it up in the air the whole time to see if we can get that bird's eye view. So well, I won't actually know till I get back to see if we've got any good footage. Please check out the seated gun on YouTube and uh, come and see if we've got any good footage. <laughs> it's the only way I can find out. So that'll be the way you'll find out too. <laughs> Drive two was just round the corner. We've come round onto drive three, the Thorns. We are on a really quite a steep slope. And the reason the Polaris is behind us is literally because the ground is a bit icy and it's really hard. I, um, I'm struggling to find somewhere to dig in to uh, keep my balance. So put the Polaris behind us so I can lean against that and uh, hopefully not roll down the hill. As I keep saying, James, it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality. And I'd rather have birds that we can remember than birds that we, you know, you take loads of and you, you don't really remember where you've shot them or what drive it was or why you shot them or why it was such a great bird. You know, and we took a great right to left crosser. We took a lovely bird that was straight over the top of us and we actually had a left to right crosser. So, you know, we had one of, of each angle, which was great. And they were all good cock birds, all 40 yarders. Um, so, you know, yeah, not a lot to complain about really on this drive. Like blistering. But the Jones family are just, they're wonderful people. You know, they're all about shooting and conservation, the countrywide, they're country people. And, you know, they want to provide the best day for the guns. And, you know, the nice thing is there's no pressure. Yes, it's a commercial shoot, of course it is. And it has to be profitable because that's how these places stay in business. But in the same angle, you know, the way that it's, you're looked after here and the way that the family sort of make you feel part of their family is, is something that's really very, very special. Everyone has a gun 
imagine pheasant shooting and you're sort of up there and you're vertical, but these were pheasant that were required to be shot in front, like a partridge really, which feels very, very strange to say the least. But what the keepers tell us to do is what we're going to do. So uh, we made sure there's plenty of blue sky behind them. They were all 20, 25 meters, but they were just, you know, you were shooting them out front rather than vertical, but all the same good sporting challenging birds. I think we've had a tough day. Um, you know, we've got bright sky, we've got very, very frosty morning, no wind. So I think it's been a tough old day for getting the birds up. But, you know, the birds that have got up have been good birds. This drive especially, I think, is all about the positioning. We're on the top of a hill, the rest of the guns are banking down. So they're, they're going where we are to where the rest of the guns are. There's probably a 25 metre drop. Where we were, we literally were probably 25 meter birds maximum uh, and there were a few uh, we took two really nice hen birds uh, left to right crossers uh, took a couple of nice cock birds on on the on the right on the left hand side as well so you know as I keep saying it's not about the quantity it's about the quality and uh, you know once again the quality has been great it's a lovely day it's no pressure nothing's too much trouble and that's what this is all about. It's not just about how many birds you shoot. It's about the whole, the whole experience of a day and having a nice day out in the countryside. And I think we've had that and some today. For more about Ely cartridges, go to elyhawklimited.com. You can find JP on YouTube as The Seated Gun.